Each day, thousands of people in Baltimore start their day with a lengthy commute to work by car, bus, or rail. For those taking public transportation, this commute can take an hour and a half or more. For many of these public transit commuters, their journey begins waiting for a bus that is often late or might not show up at all. So how do lengthy commutes and an unreliable public transit system impact Baltimoreans, Baltimore's job market, and the economy as a whole? Well, when the 2010 census came out, every other city between Washington and the Boston Corridor had gained population for the first time in six decades, except for Baltimore City. Philadelphia, Newark, New Jersey, Washington, D.C., Boston, New York City, of course. So what was it about Baltimore that we were the only city that didn't kind of capture growth? Baltimore is the only one that doesn't have a robust transit and transportation system. Our number one indicator that's most negatively correlated with population change is the 45-minute commute time. The effectiveness of Baltimore's transit system directly impacts the health of its neighborhoods. Since residents need better access to jobs, the job market suffers as well. The jobs are everywhere. Transportation impacts jobs. I mean, it's, it's no question about that. The real deal for us is, can you get to your place of employment without spending a four hours of your day just riding? Our people can only be as good at it, they can only succeed at attendance, good attendance, good punctuality, being dependent upon a reliable, predictable transportation system. Beyond individual job seekers and employers, transit has an effect on our region's economic development. It's been estimated that uh, if for every dollar uh, in public transportation, there's an economic return of four dollars. A billion dollar investment in transit creates and sustains 50,000 jobs. A two-person household that uh, gives up an automobile and relies instead on transit can save almost $10,000 a year. Property values uh, close to high-quality transit are on average 40% higher than, than, than property uh, that's not. So how can Baltimore build a robust public transit system that grows the economy, connects people to jobs, and makes our neighborhoods healthy? We can start by tracking and publicly reporting what people care about most. These five basics. Reliability, speed, access, frequency, and walkability. Reliability is one of the most important elements for great transit. It is whether or not transit vehicles arrive at a given destination close to a scheduled time or headway. Speed is an essential component of commute time and therefore has a direct impact on access. In addition to jobs, enabling people to access goods, services, activities, and destinations is critical to economic growth and an improved quality of life. Frequency is a major component of a robust public transit system. When service is frequent, riders can simply show up to their bus stop without having to worry so much about planning their trip using a schedule. Transit users are also pedestrians. Walkability refers to how safe comfortable and convenient it is to walk in a particular place. Land use and development patterns contribute to walkability by making destinations easy to reach without a car. To improve the five basics, we need to find more effective methods to measure them, publicly report, and implement targeted improvements. The transportation system needs to serve the people. We shouldn't be working in silos when it comes to transportation. Everybody has a stake in it. So if they don't talk together and everybody's working in a silo, you're never going to get anywhere. Everyone has a stake in it, so everyone should get involved. State legislators, local officials, and Baltimore area residents. In order for Maryland to improve, we need to increase investment in MTA to keep up with rising costs and increase transportation options. State legislators, 
can give the MTA the resources it needs by passing the Maryland Metro Transit Funding Act. The act will increase operating and capital funding for the MTA, conduct a comprehensive capital needs assessment to get the system to a state of good repair, and create a new regional transit plan. Local officials can support the Complete Streets Ordinance, which calls for designing and building streets that are optimal for users of all backgrounds with any mode of travel. Baltimore area residents can advocate for improved public transportation by asking state legislators to support the Maryland Metro Transit Funding Act, asking city council members to support Baltimore's Complete Streets Ordinance, calling on the MTA to do more to improve on the five basics. And a transit system that really allows people to have choice is critical for making sure the city can thrive in the future.